Hello everyone, so as we say goodbye to another year, what is happening on the overhaul mod scene in 7 Days to Die? I've been holding out, hoping for more news on some of those popular overhauls that we are still expecting an Alpha 21 update, but you've heard the saying, no news is good news, well in this case it is crap. With Alpha 21.2 going stable, we mainly had a flurry of overhaul mods that were moving to stable as well, as their delay was mainly waiting for the fun pimps to, well, go stable. Darkness Falls already has an updated patch 5.0.1 out with its stable version and there is a link in my description of the patch video if you would like to take a look. District Zero went stable mid-November and Xylox is now working on version 2. He will still do updates for various Alpha 21 changes and some possible critical patches, but what happens in 2024 will depend a lot on his real life work. You may recall that Xylox had great aspirations for the future of District Zero as he indicated that he would like to have planets that are accessible via a spaceship. As we obviously don't have planets in the game, he has suggested the manipulation of biomes and cutting them off from one another. Doing this within the realms of Seven Days to Die is certainly a mean feat and I hope these ideas are still on the table. Expect version 2 sometime after Alpha 22 is actually released. Joke Mod Rizza says that version 3 is now done, and besides some basic updates, he says he will probably get started with version 4 at some point. For now, version 3 has a lot of work and love that has been pumped into it. So pick up the Alpha 21 version from my link in the description if you have not actually tried it out yet. There is also a patch notes video link above, below, and at the end of this video. Sorcery Mod released this version 1.9 to the public at the start of December, so anyone can download and play the recent version. Sporting new monsters like the Revived Skeletons, which not only has the three previous element versions of Lightning, Ice and Fire, but the new Unholy Element monster version is also leeching its way into the mod at this point. Soul Gates have been added and these require souls to unlock. There are now also secret passages in all the sorcery POIs and there are randomized dungeon components that will help give each sorcery mod experience a bit more of a unique experience. Divrex has introduced soul caches where you can sacrifice a soul and gamble for loot. These are just a few of the changes that sorcery has added in the 1.9 version. As Darkness Falls and Sorcery Mod are often combined and probably the only full overhauls that have this relationship, players have been asking whether the compatible mixed version is now available. The answer is, well, yes and no. There is a version that has been done, but it is not the official version that Kane and Deverex will be working on, probably in January or February. This version was released about a week ago, but you can find it in the Sorcery Discord under the Darkness Falls channel. For now, it is not under the downloads, but has just been pinned to the Darkness Falls topic. Jax, the mastermind behind Ravenhurst mod, is still working on his Alpha 21 version of Scavengers of the Living Dead. He has been working on this off and on over the years and has said that he will only release the Alpha 21 version once it is as bug free as possible and is a lot more enjoyable. So don't get fooled by the version 6 patch notes which you will find related to Alpha 21. They are just showing his progress, you will still only be able to play the Alpha 20 version for now. Asia mod went stable at the start of December, but the Asia team is still working on it and adding content to Alpha 21. The most recent version includes new zombies such as farmer zombies and zombie lords. Wild West mod, another era specific mod like Asia, has been having a very busy December. The devs have been working on adding and testing some new entities in the mod, mainly so that they can remove the vanilla versions of them. Tolman Brad said that one of the monsters are likely going to be quite a pain with a lot more damage on players, especially in the late game and higher game stage levels. Now, when it comes to new and upcoming overhauls, NZ mod released just a few days after Alpha 21 came out this year and has been flying along at a very fast rate with new content, bug fixes and updates. Legion the Dev released version 1.9 about a week ago which adds a large number of changes and now has lore and endgame POI and various new entities. The current endgame POI is very well done and I will leave you to explore it and discover what lurks beneath. 
underneath. Legion is also hoping to make some changes to the current zombies and give them more of a classic zombie feel. It is great to see new mods growing and expanding at such a fast rate. So keep the name of this mod in mind or play the mod. NZ is certainly looking like it is only going to get better. If I can, I hope to do a feature guide of this mod and flesh it out a lot more in early 2024. Age of Oblivion launched version 7.1 at the start of December. Harper Max says that you don't have to start a new save for version 7.1, but it is certainly advisable. Certain features like the amusement park and some trader changes will likely not be there if you don't make the new save. Besides the new user interface also showing a new look for vehicles, my previous version 7 patch video showed a rideable amusement park that was coming. Well, the rideable versions are now in the 7.1 release. This is similar to the old amusement park from version 6, but is an outstanding update to the old theme park. Besides the rides that you can get on and participate with, there are also mini games. Papa Max said that he's also looking at cleaning up and improving the models of a number of the NPCs in the mod. He is also updating the arenas, the caves, creating wandering traders like drug dealers and fleshing out the storyline. He has recently asked for more testers to join up. You will get access to the latest version of Age of Oblivion, but need to obviously do some testing for bugs. Head over to the Age of Oblivion Discord if you want to know more. You of course will find the link in my description. Winterween is back with a release in late November, which is a mod Bus Ferry and Zith. Papa Mac, the Age of Oblivion dev, made a comment some time back about these two modders. He said, Everyone should thanks Ferry and Zith for everything that they have done. So much work of other modders is a result of what they have done. Winterween is set in a post-apocalyptic nuclear winter and is one of the most unique environments that any overhaul has ever attempted. Check out the what is video in my description or in the link above. The mod has been relaunched for Alpha 21 and will give you nightmares. <laughs> A lot of modders have day jobs, family and real life things going on. It's not surprising that modders walk the thin line between modding, meeting your expectations for the mod and also having to burn those extra hours to be responsible and take care of the things that either pay the bills or well are more important. So just a reminder to thank the modders for their work, especially as we know what a great contribution modding has done to keep the 7 days to die game alive. So what don't we have yet? Well, three of the biggest and certainly popular mods are still MIA. All should have been released by the end of the year, but real life and polish certainly has been getting in the way of that. Subquake from Undead Legacy has said that he will only be able to release within the first quarter of 2024. Undead Legacy is immensely popular and owing to its unique and excellent interface and models, playing the old version 20 is still something that you can do. Its look and feel means that you won't even notice it is actually Alpha 20. It will still give you a considerably better experience over the vanilla version. Killer Bunny has suggested sometime in January is his likely release date of Apocalypse Now. However, he very recently said he is still unsure if that is going to happen. He has been consistently posting updated screenshots in his Discord of the new version as he works on it. He is getting there, so please give him a shout out to encourage his good work on the Discord or in the comments. Rebirth Furious Ramsey has released information updates over the past few months and recently he said owing to so much still needing to be done he will likely be posting a poll to see whether he releases or not. Either he releases an early version which doesn't have everything he wanted to add and fix or he can continue until he is done and feels comfortable with releasing. Join the Rebirth Discord if you would like to have a say as the poll will likely happen in January sometime. Before we end off, a new mod by Hell's Janitor was released this month called 28 Alphas Later. <laughs> the way 7 Days to Die is going, I would not be surprised if he's aiming for a guess on when 7 Days to Die will actually release. <laughs> However, the mod is no joke. It is set to slow down gameplay and progression and to make traders less powerful. In general, the vanilla look and feel is still there, but players are permanently infected. 
Yes, players are permanently infected. It is a feature, so you are not getting rid of your infection if you die. The cure is to be found in the medical magazines. Overall, zombies are tougher, biomes are game staged and a lot tougher, not so dangerous, crafting costs more, traders charge more, and the wasteland is a very difficult place with added radiation. So you will require a hazmat suit if you want to enter the wasteland. There are also a few new workstations and zombie variants, but overall the mod does definitely have a slower progression and more difficult gameplay. Download link is in my description. Thanks for watching, a happy new year to all who celebrated, and I will see you in the next one.